Hey guys, it's a uh, Monday show, Lock and Load Show on Gun Channels, and uh, we got a lot to talk about, doing some uh, Second Amendment uh, freedom stuff today, and uh, update on my preps, uh, really quick before we get into that, uh, you take a couple screen shares, one sec. Right, here's some, I ordered this stuff online. On account of the uh, ICBM threat, um, a couple boxes of this, Thyro Safe, um, the only FDA-approved 65 milligram potassium iodide tablet product sold in the U.S. Um, basically, what it says: when fallout occurs, the thyroid gland cannot distinguish between regular iodide and radioactive iodide, and it, if radioactive iodide has been released into the atmosphere by a nuclear emergency, it could be absorbed, absorbed by the thyroid gland. If harmless potassium iodide like thyrosafe fills the thyroid gland, there is no room for the radioactive iodine to affect the gland and its function. That is how thyrosafe protects you and your family from the possibility of developing thyroid abnormality or even cancer years later after a nuclear emergency. And it's approved by the FDA, so... Got a couple boxes. If there is a nuclear disaster, uh, whatever I don't use, I'm sure I could sell off for a dramatic profit. <laughs> anyway, so much for profiting during the apocalypse. Let's see. What about a lead line suit? That costs more than 12 bucks. And the shipping would be hell to Hawaii. <laughs> Based on based upon weight. But says, well, what's wrong with my plan to build an ammunition igloo to keep the radiation out? Let's see. If it works. Yeah, if you have enough ammo to build an ammunition ammunition lead igloo, it would work, I think. Uh, the uh, prepper. I've been, I've been looking at getting one of these off Sportsman Guide. They're 50 bucks or so, but uh, I think they need to be calibrated. Uh, and then I'm not sure how to do that. Get any training on the Marine on how to calibrate any of these? No. We had NBC guys, Nuclear Biological Chemical Warfare Specialists, and they handled that. So. All right. I'll have to do some searching on the Internet to find out what's involved in calibrating these. They're about, I've seen them for like 300 bucks or 200 bucks, but on sportsman guides, they're only 50. I assume they're not calibrated, and that's something I'll have to figure out how to do when I get one of these. Look, next time you go to the hospital, take this with you. <laughs> it has to have access to the radiological equipment, you know, strictly for research, of course. And then if it goes off, you know, it's too sensitive, right? They, they won't think you're weird. No. Ah, I, I won't go into that. <laughs> All right, so um, on the so on the uh, video description, I have we wanted to talk about the ATF comments uh, open period until the twenty fifth uh, of this month, and um, so this is my comment that I made. Uh, there's a link to the uh, basically it's the bump stock ban. Uh, they have open for comment on whether they're going to classify a bump stock as a machine gun or something silly like that. And uh, it's before I get into the whole thing about how how relatively important it is and how it's perceived by the uh, gun loving public, which is like I think ninety percent of America. <laughs> um, I'll just read what I said. Uh, freedom is all we need. Stop banning things. The European Union has over a thousand regulations about milk. I oppose any ban. A bump stock is not a machine gun. Bump firing can be achieved with standard belt loop on pants. Are, are we to regulate belt loops as well since they can certainly be used to increase the rate of fire of a semi-automatic rifle? Will we have to register our pants with the ATF and local police department? More basically, the Founding Fathers intended that if the government wants to take some action, they need to get 
permission from the people, i.e. a ballot referendum. Uh, the reason the American people do not have to go to their government to ask permission to do everything is because that would be tyranny. U.S. soldiers have fought to liberate countless countries from tyranny. Let us keep America free by not banning M855 green tips, large soft drinks, bump stocks, jello beer, or anything else short of nuclear weapons. Less is more. Less regulation, less bans, less government rules. Does the ATF really think that if it were to create a thousand new firearm regulations that would herald some kind of improvement in America? I suggest the ATF start out improving America by not making any new rules or regulations today and removing as many regulations as possible. Freedom is all we need. P.S. shall not be infringed. And I also put, I didn't have room to put that on the very end, I, uh, which I, I just couldn't take a snapshot of it. It just says, uh, freedom works, QED, um, but it wouldn't let me scroll down and get the whole thing on the screen. Um, now, when I posted this stuff today, my reply today, um, it came back as uh, when I tried to find it. I'll see if I can show that to you. Find anything on that. Let's see. Go back to this. I'll explain that in order to post this, you have to give them your name, your address, and if you want confirmation, your email address. Yeah, and here's what it says. Can you see this? Uh, uh, federal government is in shutdown mode. Regulations.gov will continue to operate normally, but comment processing may be interrupted for certain agencies until government status changes. So they, they received it, basically, but they didn't... Um, process it yet. So there's my comment. Let's see if it they're back up yet. Now same message. Right. And here's what you see when you go to the link uh, on where you leave your comments. Uh, it's in my video description uh, of this video. Application, uh, the definition of machine gun to bump fire stocks or other similar devices. Yes, my belt loop is not a machine gun any more than a, a stock is a machine gun. <laughs> So you leave your comment here, you, and, and they want your name, social, you know, they don't ask your social security number, but not like they can't figure it out from your IP address. Uh, and uh, I didn't put Hawaii Volcano Squad under organization name. I thought that would be, or gun channels or anything. I just left that one blank. But I filled out everything else. And um, so I think uh, this is one of those things uh, where on – on it doesn't have this doesn't have the animal spirits uh, that the uh, as far as like on the internet that the green tip ban did. The green tip ban was a lot closer to Sandy Hook, and uh, there was a lot of concern about guns being banned. And instead, they did this. They had uh, the Obama administration ATF had the. Um, I need to get another screenshot up now for this, so I can talk about this. Uh, the Obama administration uh, had ATF went to try and ban M855, uh, and they had to have, in order to do that, they had to have an open comment period before they could do that. That's just the government rules, right? And what happened was everybody on the internet went crazy. <laughs> and uh, that was a good thing, though. Um, and so let's see if we get to the green tips. Yeah, there they are. This is an x-ray of green tips. Hopefully you can see this. And um, the M855 right in the middle there. Uh, you see the core. Uh, x-rays of the actual ammunition. Uh, and so animal spirits is like, it's like in theory in a free market, when the stock market just rockets straight up, that's because everybody wants to buy. And so that's what happened with green tips. Everybody thought it, 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 what motivates people to do things is a lot is fear. And like it, when there was a fear of banning uh, ARs or AKs or just a gun ban coming down after Sandy Hook, then everybody wanted to go out and buy a gun because there was there's two kinds of basically two kinds of fear that are the most common FUD, fear, undoubt, fear, uh, uncertainty and doubt. And then there's FOMO. 
no, fo yeah, FOMO, a fear of missing out, F-O-M-O, fear of missing out. And so that people were afraid that they, okay, they, they didn't know what green tips were, but there was some ammunition that was going to be banned. What are they going to ban next? So uh, a lot of people ran out. And when I made my video the next day, like everybody was in the gun shop asking for green tips and he, he had already pulled them off the shelf <laughs> for, stored them for himself. And he, yeah, but anyway, um, I just bought a few boxes of it. And, uh, it, it, so, but there was like this animal spirits and everybody and his brother, all you had to do for like any live hangout was name your chat, name the, you name your hangout green tips in the title somewhere. And you would have like over a hundred viewers you know, pretty much within five minutes. And, <laughs> and it, it was because everybody that was into guns just did a search on the internet or YouTube. And it was pretty funny because I would, uh, one, well, I did one video where it was just me looking through uh, the like GunBot and all the internet search engines for what, where, if there was any green tip available uh, on all the uh, internet uh, ammunition search engines. And and some guy had left a message saying, you know, this is just a video of you looking through uh, online gun stores for for two hours, and there's nothing happening. It's just you clicking. I said, I said, I kind of agree with you. It's a dumb video, but it had like a thousand views or something. <laughs> and 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 don't leave negative comments, so I'm going to block you anyway, even though I agree with you. <laughs> it was like the animal spirits were so powerful that when the ATF turned on their fax machine, they just it just like blew through all the paper in Washington D.C. with responses of people not wanting the, the green tips banned. Uh, and so it in in but I don't know. I don't think there's any fear of uh, panic uh, setting in if, if they were to ban bump stocks because it's not like banning guns or banning ammo. I mean, we know like a Second Amendment, you know, fanatics that it, it, it's uh, it's it's the government regulation that we don't need. Um, but it's it's not causing panic in the general public, general gun guy gun owning public I think in America but it's worth the time uh, to to do anyway because it's like when they come for this what are they going to come for next and that was part of the fear with the whole green tips so the animal spirits aren't quite here uh, on this particular ban but it's if if you're just into doing freedom kind of stuff for keep America free it's worth the uh, five minutes of your time to uh, tell them that it's a bad idea to ban bump stocks, or I don't know if they're going to have binary triggers or what else they're going to try and go for next, or th if this is just calling a bump stock a machine gun. is <laughs> it, it doesn't make any sense. It's not. But um, And I don't think they ever actually did find that, officially determined whether it was used in the Las Vegas shooting. I mean, we heard it was, uh, but we, we didn't in the media, but we, there was no, uh, has there been any report that it was actually used? I mean, I don't think so. So. It, um, the way that was worded, um, it implied, here's the thing. The people who say that they were in photos, but nobody's saying they were used. You have a point. They're not actually coming out and saying a whole lot of anything, and the conspiracy people go nuts. When you go all conspiracy theory, you give no credibility to the 2A community. So that don't help. If you listen to the audio, and I understand the audio is affected by echoes from the building. It's also audio from cell phones and that sort of thing. It was rapid fire. That was not a machine gun, and that wasn't somebody pulling the trigger as fast as they could semi-auto. This guy was not some sort of gun expert. And the sheriff did come out and say in one of the early press conferences that that he that one of the guns was converted. It turns out he was absolutely wrong. Why he said that, I don't know. It was irresponsible to say that. More than likely, this guy used bump a bump stock on one or more of the firearms that he had. Now, why did he bring so many to his room? Who knows? 
Was uh, somebody up there with him before? Maybe, but probably not during. And all these other theories about people that were there getting killed off so they can't talk or that there was a guy in the fourth floor shooting even though no other window was broke out so how can you shoot if there's no all that other crap just people quit okay because you're making us look like a bunch of nutbags and when we look like a bunch of nutbags the people who are on the fence or the people who don't understand guns or the second amendment or anything else like that they're not willing to listen so for the sake of argument Let's say he used a bump stock to do what he did. It's the first time any of us have ever heard of one of these things even being used in a crime. Why? Because it's a gimmicky piece of crap. I would not desecrate my AR-15 putting one of these things on there. And <laughs> the people who get them, the people who get them and use them, it's strictly for rec recreation. I call them wannabes because they've obviously never fired a full auto. By the way, there are places all over the country you can rent a full auto. No, you can't take it home and caress it. But they got to clean the damn thing. It's not cheap, but hey, it's whatever you want, depending on where you go. So if you just have this itch to shoot a full auto, save up some money, treat yourself, have a good old time. Or do it the cheap way, and if you're young enough and healthy enough and smart enough, Enlist in the military. You can shoot all the full auto you want. So once you get it out of your system, it's no big deal. I think that people should have the right to have full auto. I think people should have the right to have these stupid gimmicky bump stocks. But your average American who isn't, who doesn't, doesn't appreciate the Second Amendment, doesn't understand a lot of this stuff, they think we're a bunch of nutbags. So just be careful what you say because you don't help. That's all. Okay. Did you think my uh, written response was okay in the comment? I thought your written response was okay. I thought it was a little bit too wordy, and it was right on the edge of pushing it too far because they said they're not going to accept anything that that sounds too um, too aggressive or uh, that any profanity or anything else like that. And there are going to be plenty of people writing in saying, I think we should ban them. I mean, I think yours was fine. I didn't um, use profanity. I know. No, that. you didn't use any profanity, and you, you got right up to the edge of, of getting a little bit, you know, about the whole shall not be in French thing and stuff. They're less likely to listen to that. This isn't like the director of the the um, ATF getting these directly, or President Trump getting these directly, reading them personally. These are these are people that are, are going to be tasked with going through these and put a yay or a nay. And if somebody on the other side writes four or five sentences that says. I'm really worried about these things. They're bad. What do we need them for? Blah, blah, blah. That is a yay. And if one of us says, well, what I put, well, and, and what I put might, might not help either. I put, I don't own one of these things. I'll never own one of these things. I think it's a gimmick for a wannabe who wants to shoot full auto. But this does not change the function of the firearm from semi-auto to full auto. Do not ban these. And that was it. <clears throat> You know, right. everybody's going to have a different way of saying it. But if you just get all, you know, F this and conspiracy theory that, blah, blah, you just ruined it. You you just won more for the yays and one against the, the nays. And, you know, I wasn't I wasn't involved in the 2A community during the, uh, the M855 thing. I knew about what was going on, but I wasn't wasn't really that active at the time. You know, because I I, uh, I had about a 10 year period there where I was kind of out of the two A thing, and um, a lot of people talked about how successful we were back then. I don't, I don't think it know was if us. we'll be that. Well, I don't know if we'll be that successful this time, but I hope we are. I think Iraq veteran 8888 said it best in his video. I was I've been watching a lot of videos about this lately, and a lot of people are, are parroting the same thing. Or they've got a little bit different rendition on it. And I thought IV-88, and I don't always agree with him, but his wasn't, you know, it, it was it was okay. And, you know, I was, I was talking with Jared, and he got a letter today saying that you live in Massachusetts, you have one, you have to surrender it, or else you're a criminal. Well, that's happening. Bans. Well, that's what's happening in Massachusetts. So this will go to a federal level. What's happening in Massachusetts will happen on a federal level 
if they decide that this thing, what I don't understand is why they don't say something like, well, um, if we classify it as a machine gun, then it'll be NFA. And if it's NFA and you already own one, wouldn't you be grandfathered in? The whole thing doesn't make any sense. The first time somebody gets arrested for having a, an 11-round mag instead of a 10-round mag, it's going to federal court. I mean, uh, somebody, or maybe not the first time, but the second or third, uh, they'll they'll look, be looking for a case, and probably the Supreme Court won't hear it, but uh, it'll depend what district you're in. So one of those, another, another deals where, where like the Ninth Circuit Court and probably a few others need to be dissolved legislatively while the Republicans still can manage it. Um, I don't know what they're doing. Well, they're not doing a whole lot. You know, we're supposed to have... Both I like, um, I House like and this, the Senate. I like this. And the presidency one, and, and the, the Supreme Court. And it doesn't seem like we do. I, I like the one quote that somebody said in uh, one of the one of the congressmen said that the, the government of the United States of America was designed by geniuses, but it's run by idiots. So, <laughs> uh, so uh, for anybody that's new to the chat, I'm well, we're trying to get Dusty in here, but uh, I want to just introduce uh, Squib and, from Michigan. He's a uh, he's a Marine uh, there. and and uh, and who's now in the civilian world uh, working uh, at a uh, plastic uh, auto uh, parts uh, uh, manufactory or uh, uh, I know there's a better word for it. Uh, fabricator and uh, Dusty is a farmer with a pitchfork and uh, a boat that I couldn't see very well on the map <laughs> and uh, a really neat farm but doesn't have any hedgehogs or reinforced industrial trash can yet. And it doesn't need them. It doesn't need them. You ought to get like, do, do you still have any dogs? They're always good. Yeah. I have a dog. All right, cool. It'll lick you to death, not bite you. Well, will it bark if a bad guy gets near you guys? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it'll bark oh, no. all the time, but it's, right. it's a baby. Well, if I, all it has to do is bark, so then you know there's you can pull out one of your long guns and deal with the threat. But um, All right. Uh, so... That was my response. I do encourage everybody to go online uh, on that link and leave your own words, uh, thoughts uh, on um, uh, the, the declaring a bump stock a, a machine gun. Doesn't make any sense to me because uh, it's not. And um, do your Second Amendment deed of keeping keeping uh, America just a little bit freer every time uh, that you can. Uh, you leave America just as free as we found it. Uh, when they when they when they pass law regulations like this, it's like littering on the highway. I mean, it's like somebody leaves a stupid thing, and then everybody else like goes, "Oh, that's stupid." That book that walks by and reads it for like the next hundred years until they get rid of it. Um, yeah. Okay. So, pretty much covered that one. Um, animal spirits. I, I think the whole thing is a lot of, there's a lot of manipulation going of reality for people's perceptions of reality going out there, especially with the government shut down and stuff. Uh, one side blames the other, the other blames, and, and what's, what's really the most obvious, uh, manipulation of reality was, when, when the Rep Republicans finally won and Trump wins, is that magically the stock market shoots up a couple hundred points or something. Well, it wasn't magic. It was Steve Mnuchin in the Treasury pushing a button. <laughs> and it went up to make... It's like one of those, let's manipulate people's perceptions of reality moments. Um, but... Uh, and I'll say that it's the CME is manipulated. A lot and and that can work in your favor or work against you but it, people's perceptions of reality are very manipulated and so that's the hard part is is to is to just discern what reality is I think a lot of the time uh, and uh, but that's my two cents on it 
opinions vary. So what's what have you guys been working on? Uh, and doing uh, my prepping was the Thyrosafe uh, tablets. Um, I got a twenty pound bag of white rice, and I think that's about it <laughs> this week. Not, not, not trying to spend a lot of money uh, right now. Had other stuff to do. Saving up for something? Um, no, just not trying to waste money <laughs> on stuff that I don't need, really. A uh, 20 pound bag of rice. Uh, the, the, it, it, I don't know how long it'll actually last for in the bag that it came in. Uh, it, it says that it's good until like the end of 2019, uh, or it says Best Buy, but, uh, and I haven't, obviously I don't have Mylar bags and a uh, vacuum sealer, might make it last longer, but it's just, I just put it in the... The rice, the rice itself won't go bad, it may get level in it, which is a little bug, but the rice itself, if it's dried proper, it won't go bad. Okay. Yeah, rice, rice pretty much keeps forever. Right, that's why I got it just to add to my preps because uh, twenty pounds of rice, so that's I mean, a lot of. I'm, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but uh, unless you're eating rice on a daily or weekly basis, uh, that twenty pound bag may last a while. I think we buy it. We either buy it in twenty five or fifty pound bags. I think they're fifty. And wow. <laughs> yeah, well, dude, you can buy a fifty pound bag at Sam's Club. For only a little bit more than a five-pound bag at Myers, so uh, you know it's the same thing I with mean, flour. We buy flour twenty-five pounds at a time. Except people in the, the third uh, world, people in the third world can't do that, and, and it's in it's it's just we're so lucky to live in America where we can get these incredible deals, and it's easy to get, and we don't have to hijack a sugar truck <laughs> or well, anything crazy. They could have everything we have if they're. If they would do what our forefathers did, risk everything for freedom, because that's what, what made this country. People risk their lives, their reputation, their property, their money, their families' lives, everything to fight for the freedom we have today. In other countries, they're too chicken shit to do that. Yeah, it's, it, like I said in last week's show, and by and large, this is a looking, taking the planet as a whole, this is a world in, populated by enslaved people um, and uh, and uh, whether they're enslaved by uh, propaganda uh, action not just physical chains or debt or uh, dogma uh, political dogma religious dogma. I mean, there's so many forms of slavery and, and the people just did. so it's a really good thing about America and it's not like we don't we're perfect or we know how to do everything right we don't <laughs> but uh, it's like like somebody was saying that um, uh, the the gut uh, in Congress that during the shutdown they said the government of the United States of America was designed by geniuses but it's run by idiots. So um, people are human. You can't expect perfection all the time from our politicians, especially. Um, but uh, trying to keep freedom alive is worth uh, is worth uh, and passing it on to whoever comes after you. Uh, or just any other person on the planet and trying to promote and liberate uh, the enslaved peoples of the world. It's it's like a worthwhile endeavor. And I don't know why pe some people sign up for the military. Maybe that's it. Maybe if some of it's a job, it's an adventure, or it's just uh, whatever it is. People have different reasons for doing it. Um, but uh, Or you could just help out by uh, getting, getting on there, uh, do some... Second Amendment freedom stuff, uh, like we're suggesting on this uh, one particular um, ATF uh, uh, open comment period. It's open until the 25th, I believe. And, and speaking of manipulation, Dust, do you know what happens on Friday? What? I'll give you a hint. It's the end of the day on Friday. One more hint, expiration. No expiration. You know what expires on Friday? <laughs> Monthly contracts? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Did I mean do you do you 
follow how 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 close do you follow that stuff uh, when you're doing your futures for your uh, agricultural endeavors? Well, typically the the week before a expiration is when you're you will see some peaks in the market. Just and but now it's not as bad as it used to be. It used to be if you owned that contract the month you had to take owners ownership of that contract, which actually meant you had to take the grain. But now it's all just paper trading, and there's really no regulation to the commodity market. They it's hypothecated soybeans, hypothecated corn, hypothecated silver, hypothecated Bitcoin. Believe it or not. <laughs> so it'll be interesting. I think the end of end of the, the end of the, this week will be very interesting. Uh, anyway. Um, There'll be a lot of people crying if they bought Bitcoin. And there may be a lot of happy people of because somebody meeting. could somebody could just push a button and it could be a hundred thousand dollars by the end of Friday per coin. And then people will be like, "What? What? What? How did that happen?" And it'll be just just like for the same exact reason the stock market went up today because in in the bottom of the Treasury Department, Steve Mnuchin, who used to be the IT director of Goldman Sachs, just pushed a button and. Bang, 200 points on the Dow. Uh, but um, anyway, that's, it's, it's all about manipulated reality. And so try, it, freedom is real. So if we can hang on to it, it it's worth trying to keep your eye on the ball. Uh, and uh, and just uh, it, it, it's a good how – how free the people are is a good measure of uh, uh, the strength of America, I think. Um, so I, I was watching Fire and Ice on the Military History Channel about the Korean War, and uh, it was it was pretty interesting. I mean, the thing about the North Korean Army is they actually, speaking of rice, that they, they didn't need a supply chain uh, when they were, like, marching down to surround the Pusan perimeter because they just carried their rice with them on the, in their backpacks, and... and that was their supply chain. It wasn't that they couldn't like the aircraft attacking from above. There wasn't any like trucks loaded with supplies. They were just carrying everything with them, including their rice. Um, and uh, so that uh, there was a lot of interesting stuff about that, uh, like some mistakes that MacArthur may have made after the Inchon landing, uh, like not like not cutting off the retreat uh, paths of uh, from of the North Korean army from Busan perimeter to get back into North Korea. I mean, I, when you think of the fact that the North Korean army, a lot of it escaped back to North Korea. I mean, it's almost a contradiction to escape into North Korea, but that's what they did because for political reasons, uh, MacArthur wanted to uh, liberate Seoul, the capital. And so he sent the, the Marines into the capital and they were house to house fighting. And a couple days later, he sent the APC said, he led a press release saying, Seoul has been liberated. And so the AP press went in there and, and the, the press sent something back saying the press release was, well, if Seoul's liberated, somebody forgot to tell all the North Koreans in Seoul. <laughs> so I think the battle went on for more than two, it wasn't over in 48 hours. But, um, that was another one of those, one hell, of those. hell of a wars that uh, let's just hope it doesn't flare up again. Because we'll all be fighting over a line in the mud over there. Anyway, I'm going to go check on the external chat or the gun channels chat and see who's out there. Yeah, I can't see any of that. I'm on my phone. Oh, you make it out oh, to the... Oh, everybody's on their phone but me. Okay. Hey, you know, if, if I could, I'd, I'd have a desktop over in the uh, in the factory and just uh, have my headset on and, and go on the way I like. Okay, let's see. If the rice oh, says... Raphael says if the... If the rice is, quote, good until Armageddon, it, it is time to worry. 
Okay, and somebody gave me a link. Let's see Jesse James, Raphael Morales, Ohio 45 ACP on the Gun Channel side. Hey guys, John Domit, John Brown Brown, Stan Olch. Sorry if I mispronounce anybody's name. On the external, Rich White, New Throne Play. And let's see. The one common denominator amongst mass killings lately has been antipsychotic types of medica medicaid medicines. All right. I don't know about that. I wouldn't know. Um stance is any type of belt fed machine gun. Sounded like a machine gun fire to me. And more than one, right? No, well, I don't know. It wasn't. It wasn't a machine gun, and it wasn't more than one. Well, as long as we don't have to worry about the glass, because nobody get, nobody gives a shit about glass, right? Nobody does. Glass. <laughs> Who gives a shit about glass? Yeah, nobody. Um. Uh, I I was I was listening to a chat once where they were talking about the Vegas thing and somebody goes, it sounds like an M60 to me. I mean, I've never shot an M60, but uh, that's what it sounds like to me. And I'm going, this is exactly what I'm talking about. When people on the other side hear people say that, they think that we're all a bunch of nuts. It doesn't validate what we're saying. And everybody who keeps going, well... Uh, they never came out and said he's actually using bump stocks. Okay, that doesn't just forget that. That doesn't help our argument. Our argument is we don't want to see uh, the the definition change. That's what it is. If you want to go all conspiracy theory, going well, they haven't released that. Okay, that, that that it's not helping. It's not it's not fixing a problem. You're focusing on what the government hasn't released from their police report, their FBI report, what the media hasn't released. Why they haven't, who knows, who cares? But it goes tinfoil hat. And when you go tinfoil hat, the people who don't appreciate the Second Amendment don't want to listen. They shut you out. They're all a bunch of nutcases. And whatever, where do I sign to ban this thing? So you're not helping when you start talking like that. Right. Well, basically, people. To, uh, I guess at uh, at broad at like broadcast companies that, that pretend to be the news, um, they uh, have to fill time, so they just have talking heads on, and they say whatever flies into their mind. You know. So. Um, what I want to know is why isn't somebody saying, why don't we ban tall buildings? Why don't we ban open air uh, uh, arenas? Why don't we ban gatherings of large people? Why don't we ban, because, you know, they want to ban a bump stock that allowed him to shoot at a more rapid rate than he probably could have pulling the trigger semi-automatic because the guy wasn't some sort of trained marksman assassin. He just some dumbass with a gun is what he was. Okay. But they're not looking at some of the other factors. The factors are the people were crowded together. The factors are he was able to get a vantage point from up above. There are other things that if he had a bump stock and he was standing in the street, he wouldn't have got as many people. If it was a group of 100 people instead of how many were there, thousands, he wouldn't have got as many people. Whatever it is, they're not looking. At, so the reason I'm saying that is instead of there go instead of saying, well, they still haven't come out and said that he actually used them, even though there's pictures of the well, room and they're they're in it. Well, why aren't we looking at if you want to attack their flawed logic, attack it with other flawed logic, which is why don't we get rid of all tall buildings now? Right? Well, I, the actually dealing with the problem in a place like Las Vegas, I would say that police counter sniper deployment um, makes this like the most rational thing. I mean, I remember when I was a kid uh, in, in Los Angeles, we went to like some pro-Israel rally and there were police snipers on all the roofs. Right, because and they were ready, they were prepared and they were ready and they were set up. You're not going to get a guy to go down to Metro 
get his gear, get through traffic, get in place, figure out where the, uh, the guy's shooting from, and then take him out with this long range precision shot faster than you could get a couple guys in squad cars to rush up the elevator and go into the room and, and kick the door in guns blazing. And I know that's rough shot and it's not, you know, it wasn't exactly that perfect, but to when, when you have counter snipers set up, they're set up in advance. That's something right. that they do when they know there's going to be like, you're talking about a rally or something like that. So if you're going to tell me that every time there's a concert in Vegas, and if you're a ta tall building, They've got to have the SWAT team out there. People are not going to like that. The tourism board is going to say, we don't want it to look like it's a fucking war zone down here. Well, it, Nobody it will come down have here. To look at a, look like a war zone. I mean, I'm not an expert on how to deploy counter sniper teams, but it seems to me if there's a lot, one in Vegas, there's a lot of tall buildings. And if, if one or two of them had, had a counter sniper, counter uh, sniper teams on them, then, uh, it, it wouldn't have to look like a war zone. They'd just be deployed, and you need to. If, the, the way that, the way the strip is. Permit. The, if they if somebody applied for permit to have a concert like that, then the cost of the permit would cover the cost of the uh, counter sniper team. I'm telling you, the tourism board down there would not would not agree to this. There would be so much flack about having uh, some sort of armed presence. Well, well, have you walked through a casino in Vegas ever? There's cops with guns everywhere. No, there aren't. And yes, yeah, I'm, yes I go to are. Las Vegas. I go to Las Vegas between one and three times a year. And no, they're not. I've there's seen security. Of, there's, there's, there's security. No, Metro, Metro sticks out like a sore. Metro sticks out like a sore thumb because they wear yellow. <laughs> and you don't see a whole lot of Metro. They're there, but there's not a whole. They have security there, but not all. All the security's armed, and it's no, you don't go around and there are guns everywhere in the casino. No, uh, that's, that's gonna make people it, uncomfortable. I wasn't well, uncomfortable at all. I mean, I saw when was the last guns. time you were in Las Vegas? <sighs> it was years ago, but I but I used to go there every year and at the at the uh Venetian, and there's a few other, but the Venetian, I mean, that's a big one, that's where the sands I'm, I'm not saying is. there. There isn't a police presence. I'm not saying there aren't. There isn't security. I'm not saying there are no weapons out there at all. What I'm saying is, if if you start if if you start deploying these people in such a way that it gets noticed, it's going to affect tourism. Well, they need a sniper's hide. That's for sure. So nobody would notice. But uh, anyway. and, and and quite frankly. We live in America. This is a free country. I mean, you can't have the cops everywhere. And if you did, somebody would find some something. If it isn't about tourism or appearance, it'll be something. There'll be some sort of complaint. I, all I'm saying is it's not a bad idea, but I don't think it's going to fly or it, it, w it wouldn't last that long. <sighs> oh, well. It just, it just sucks that people are, once again, blaming the object and not looking at, and they, they even figured out what this guy's motive was yet. Yeah, I mean, they're not talking, so who the hell knows? But they're still not blaming it just being some nutbag. Whether they use a gun, or they put a bomb in a, in a rider truck, or they drive a car into a crowd, or they crash a plane into a building, or they set fire to something, or whatever it is. They're all nut jobs. Why can't anybody, you know? They got the acid attacks in England now. The van knives, the van guns for carry. So people just, let's go to acid. So now you got to get like a fucking license or something to buy like Drano and fucking bleach. Well, what about if you have a pool? What if you have a pool? You, you can so make. You have to go, call up Oily and go homeopathic. Yeah, I guess so. But you could make a corrosive substance. You can make an explosive. You can make a firebomb. You could make a gun. You could, I mean, there's so many different things. That at the end of the day, the bad guy, we say this all the time, the bad guy will machine find the tools to do what they want. England. The guy made the submachine guns as like a political statement, and I'm pretty sure he's still in jail. But like, yeah, you could, you could make that stuff. In a machine shop, you could, with simple tools... You could make a gun, and you could make it fully automatic. And I mean, there's, and for some people, full auto is 
uh, because they 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 can't hit the broadside of a barn. Some people full auto uh, would make them more dangerous, and other people full auto it's it's spray and pray, which people are still going to get hit. But it's more terrorizing than regular. I mean, gunfire is terrorizing. Full auto gunfire, especially on civilians, is even more terrorizing. Hit I mean, his buzzsaw. Yeah, I was about to say yeah, the MG42. It's got a cyclic rate of 1,500 rounds per minute. Scared a shit out of oh, well, everybody because of how fast it fires. Well, yeah. Uh, Russell yeah. DeLeon told me that the AR-15 shoots 3,600 rounds per minute. <laughs> really? Wow. 30 bullets, 30 bullets in half a second. I, I'm pretty sure it's like 3,600 rounds per minute. That's faster. That video, right? That's faster than a minigun on Guns High. Okay, now I did oh, yeah. actually see Jesse Ventura's comments on the set of uh, uh, Predator, and I mean, he, he said a few things uh, that were interesting, including I, uh, I, I, he said I, I would. First thing he said was I wouldn't go in real with these guys, but I don't, I don't mind making a film with them. <laughs> and he also said that the uh, that he he didn't need uh, uh, anybody to teach him how to. Uh, through the jungle or how to take you need anybody to teach him how to take out a sentry and he didn't need anybody to teach him how to use the most powerful weapon ever devised by mankind handheld uh, <laughs> and that's the minigun so because he was he was a navy seal so it, basically before they you know did that film they had they had to teach the actors how to Kind of be mil act like they were in the military since, but he he actually was so nobody had to teach him how to do yeah, that. Yeah, Jesse Ventura and uh, Richard Chavez, I think his name was, uh, were both uh, veterans. But I think everybody else were uh, they had no military. Well, no, Schwarzenegger, Austrian Army, so he's a veteran too. I don't know if Bill Duke was. Uh, I mean, <laughs> he said he was a Green Beret in commando, so who knows? <laughs> but. Um, yeah, well, I'd still love to have a minigun, but I'm just a peaceful civilian, so it's like I'm, I don't know why anybody would get want to. I, I can't get inside the mind of the guy that did that in Vegas. It's just that makes no sense to me. But uh, but whether they've got a minigun, a full auto NFA item, a rifle with a bump stock, a semi auto, a bolt action, a fucking muzzle loader. A stick with a nail in it, it doesn't matter. They're going to do something. Some items, in some circumstances, will allow you to do more damage in less time with a bigger fear factor. But, in general, bad guys will find something. And if you try to take it away, ban it, restrict it, whatever, they'll get it illegally. They'll make it. They'll find something else. They'll use something worse. I mean, imagine if he did rent a truck... Load it with modium nitrate and diesel and pull it right up to that thing and blow himself and the truck up. He would have taken the whole concert out. Now, I'm not saying the people who died and were injured is a small price to pay. No, nobody should have died or been injured. But everybody big, could have died. It's if he 100% had, price to yeah, pay. It, it's Right. So don't, I mean, the guy had a pilot's license. You think he couldn't have rented a plane and flown it around and crashed it right in there? He could have. And that would have done a lot more damage. Bombs right out of the plane. He, yeah, that too. He had, yeah. Yeah, he had all that, what do you call it, the uh, binary in his fucking car. He could have just dropped binary out of the plane. Well, if you drop binary, it's not going to go whatever. off. you got to shoot it, but still. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, obviously, he would have like, planned something. If, if he hadn't, you know what I mean? Yeah. He obviously yeah. would have had something devised. He could have done some serious shit. Made like a little civilian version of a Miklik. <laughs> fucking... Take out the whole concert that way. So instead that of, but instead of trying to focus on what the police haven't told us, we should really be focusing on why the police haven't told us or what this guy used. It's like why he did it. And instead of focusing on the tool, whether it be a car or a gun or acid, focus on the mental state of these people or the fact that they're they're religious zealots or whatever it is that they're what is in their mind to make them do this. Because a lot of us in the Second Amendment community would never do this stuff, even though we've got multiple guns and we've got Tannerite and we've got M855, 
yeah, ammo my, and my, all this other in, garbage. In my experience, the, the people in the Second Amendment community, uh, it, it's it's we don't just believe in peace; we insist on we insist upon it. <laughs> yeah, <know? laughs> yeah, and the whole armed society is a polite society is true. Go down to your gun range and see. I mean, it's it's a lot pol more polite there than it is once you get out on the street and people start cutting you off and flipping you off. But it's just yeah, but the safety police just find it so easily where they can just check a box, ban the freedoms real quick, make everybody safer in their mind. It's like, I mean, it's like. Yeah, whenever whenever something happens, the, whenever there's a shooting, they always try and take the, the guns away from people who didn't do it. Well, J Jared, what's going on in your state makes me concerned because if it happens enough places and enough people just roll over and take it, that to me is more, more. Um, it's more likely to g get to a national level than somebody saying they're going to amputate Jerry Mikulik's trigger finger. They're not going to amputate Jerry Mikulik's tri trigger finger, but I could see there being something down the road over time if they go, okay, we 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 were able to take away bump stocks by doing this. Now let's try this with this. And they try something else, and then they try something, else. and then ten things down the road, twenty years from now, or ten years from now, or whatever it is. On a national level, they're saying everybody has to surrender their stuff. We're not going to give you any money for it. We're not going to grandfather it in. We're not going to this. We're not going to that. And only because they've tried this and tried that and tried this and done this at this time and done this at that time and figured out what works. The only thing I don't buy on that whole thing is. The politician who's in office today that is trying to ban guns probably won't be in office in 10 or 20 years. They're probably going to be dead or retired. So what do they have to gain from it in the future? It's not like they're handing it down to the next generation of politicians. Mm. Well, they, they have their they, – they, they look at it like – I don't know how they look at it. I can't I, – they're more hard to figure out than the, the, the bad guys. It's, it's, it's – I guess they think of it as a legacy – but uh, I guess that's how most politicians think about it. I guess, but I mean, my legacy would be curing cancer or, or something like that. I would be the politician that put all this money into doing something good, and that would be my legacy, not taking things away and making controversy and crap like that. Well, it's like a constant, this is why we can't have nice things argument. So, I, I mean, I, met, I was talking to Sean Pottery in the Knives earlier today, and I was like, you know, the scariest thing about receiving this letter is... How long until I receive one for my semi-automatics? Because, I mean, you know, tying it into the whole thing with Maura Healy and her illegal reinterpretation. If you look at her reinterpretation, she says that the cosmetic features are not what make dangerous. The, uh, the action makes it dangerous. Well, the action in fucking AR-15 is semi-automatic. She's admitting, she's saying in her letter that sem so... Yeah, I don't know. It kind of freaks me out a little bit. It yeah, just, if they use, it, yeah. fear is used by all, by everybody that wants to manipulate uh, the public's perception uh, of, of reality for their own purposes. And so it's I mean, just, you know, whatever the purposes you know, are, it, it's all about fear. Yeah, and all these people just jump on. Even people, I know some people who are kind of like liberal gun owners, and they're like, you know, I don't need people owning machine guns. I don't need someone who can just walk into a crowd and mow down a bunch of people. And I'm like, dude, look, a piece of plastic. And they're saying that a simple piece of plastic can constitute something that's a machine gun. Dusty, you're being yeah, too I noisy. Had to, I had to, I'm being uh, too noisy, sorry. Oh, no, that's Dusty? But yeah. When the, a lot of people when they argue with me, the assault weapons ban, I know I've got kind of going off here. Come back and say, hey guy, a replica 1898 broom handle Mauser is a fucking assault weapon in Massachusetts. And is illegal for sale. Oh, the broom handles, 1898. <laughs> well, that's a, a cool gun. A yeah, a replica with a detachable magazine. Is it an assault weapon in Massachusetts? Well, I mean, obviously, since it's in a, in a game of some kind, it's, like it's a computer game. It's a, I don't know if it's, I don't know what game that's in, but I'm sure, I don't know if it's, there's a Call of Duty where that's used. So it, it's like they've been, 
If, if there is no rhyme or reason that logically makes sense to the things they want to ban. Uh, well, I mean, everything so, looks scary, and pretty much, you know, the the eighties the eighties action movies, you know, people just use that as fear. You know, my dad was like, "You don't need you don't need to own a silencer. What are you insane? You don't need to go around fucking killing people." I was like, "Dad, you, what are you talking about?" <laughs> But it wasn't originally so invented for assassins. It was originally invented so that it didn't sound as loud and it wasn't as scary for people who were learning to shoot, in particular women. They wanted women to be able to use a firearm to defend the home. In the, I mean, we're talking about pre, pre-1900, okay? They're, 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 they want women to be comfortable using a firearm to defend the home against... Uh, you know, a would-be attacker against a wild animal, whatever it is, and people were jumpy. I mean, there still are. There are some people that they jump. A car backfires. They jump. The silencer was meant so that it wasn't so loud, so it didn't sound so scary. Yes, it was hearing protection, but back then they weren't thinking about that so much as. Although I'm sure somebody said, "Hey, is there anything we can do about my ears ringing for two days after I shoot a squirrel?" But that's what it was never an assassin thing. Hollywood turned it into an assassin thing. Yeah, and and they could Hollywood could makes money off of making movies with people shooting. People like to see all that kind of stuff. John Wick, and, and, but uh, the reality is, that, well, it's that, an American thing. It's kind of sexy. It's whatever. I mean, we all played army when we were kids, and we would break sticks off and shape them like rifles and run around and make the sound effects and, and, you know, fall over dead and then get up and play again, you know, make some water balloons and those would be grenades and stuff like that. Oh, now you can't do that because people are offended and they're scared. You're teaching the kids to be violent and stuff like that. Well, what, what's going to happen when they get older and they join the military and they have to go away to war to protect this country, this freedom that you, I mean, well, they get, they, they train you pretty good in the Marines before they let you out. <laughs> But the I whole heard. thing is the whole thing is it's okay for there to be a movie where they can do all this violence and gore and do all these things and some of the stuff isn't even real and then but in real life you can't do anything because it's offensive or it's scary or it's promoting violence or whatever and it's like no you can't have one and have the other and and some of the reasons these politicians give for you know it's the shoulder thing that goes up that that one keeps coming back up again and again and again what's what's a barrel shroud it's a shoulder thing that goes up. Okay. I don't know if anybody um, realizes this, but on an AR-15, there is not a barrel shroud. They are hand guards. They are hand guards. If you look on a wooden, on a rifle with a wooden stock, it may or may not have a forward upper hand guard. It's a hand guard. A barrel shroud is around certain barrels it's an actual metal tube with holes in it to dissipate heat but if you touch it you're still going to get burnt just not as bad as if you touch the actual barrel it's usually on something that's rapid fire like a machine gun or something like that you see one on a tech nine but that's a barrel shroud hand guards they guard your hand from getting hot a barrel shroud does not protect your hand from getting hot it's the thing on the shoulder that goes up whatever trying to find a telescope in stock with the band those because then people are going to easily hide guns under their trench coats in the summer and blow people away with their assault rifles. Yeah, I haven't seen one person with a trench coat in Hawaii yet. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not. It's kind of warm for that. Uh, by the way, that, that so I don't know how the polar vortex is going down there and uh, or up there in Michigan. It's raining today. It's 52 degrees. We got lucky. It'll get cold again. Yeah, that's what I hear. <laughs> hey, I'm going to have to go off lunch here in two minutes, so I'm just going to uh, mute and uh, listen in the background until something comes up where i got to turn off my phone. So everybody okay. have a good show. All right. Thanks for coming on, Swib. I really appreciate it, and God bless. All thanks right. for having me. Yeah. Cool. So, Jared, what have you been up to? Uh, just school, and uh, you guys have been starting earlier and earlier, which it's not that big of a deal. But, you know. I tried. Well, we started a little later today because Squib said he needed time to get to his car after work or something. I forgot what it was. Yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, it's cool to get in 
Um, yeah, I watched Raiders of the Lost Ark last night. Uh, yeah, I, I watched that too last night. That was on, I don't know, was on Sci Fi or Fox HD or something. Yeah. I caught mine on uh, Amazon Prime. Oh, and I, yeah, I also watched Mad Max Fury Road was on, so got my nice. Glock fix, Glock movie fix. <laughs> Uh, I haven't seen that one. You haven't seen Fury Road yet? Uh, That's the new one with Tom Hardy, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I have to check it out. I like him as an actor. I really, I really liked him in that movie where he played that insane guy in England. Um, well, he's been in a lot of movies. I like the one where he plays a, where he works in a bar. Um, can't remember the title of it. And, uh, it's it's a we're interesting plot. Uh, basically, uh, they was he in Snatch also? He's been in a lot. You could just you could just punch him up on the internet and and uh, I and I am Internet Movie Database and find out all the films he's been in. Um, there was one really good plot where basically uh, the, the the plot is everybody's afraid of this guy who who claims he killed somebody. But Tom Hardy's character, he plays this understated bartender who uh, works in his uncle's bar. And he knows that this bad guy that everybody's afraid of, including like his girlfriend, uh, he, uh, is he, the guy that he, the bad guy claims that he killed uh, and got sent up to prison for. He knows that he did, the bad guy didn't really kill him because Tom Hardy's character killed him. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, he basically doesn't do anything until the very end of the movie. <laughs> it's pretty good. I liked him in uh, Inception. Did you ever see that movie? No. Oh no, you haven't seen that movie. That I was, I was uh, in basic training. I think when that movie came out, or maybe I was—I don't know—I was doing something in my unit, and I wasn't paying attention to movies. No. That movie came out. I ended up catching it later. I fucking love that movie. So. Yeah, here's here's all. I got a screenshot from uh, Fury Road here. Let me see if I could put it up real quick. Yeah, there it is. Uh, you can see that <laughs> he's upside down, <laughs> uh, and. Uh, He's got the, well, you can't see his gear. We did a show on all of his gear. There's been a lot of cosplay and stuff, people checking out his gear. And I, I wound up buying one of those that uh, South African Defense Force backpack and uh, a water bladder that fitted the smallest one that uh, Camelback makes. Um, but uh, I don't have a shoulder pad or anything. I just have the backpack that he used in the South African Defense Force pattern 65 or 63, I forget what, what it was. Um, it's on one of my videos. Uh, cool. Yeah. But, um, and I, I do have a Glock 17 now, and I bought it after the movie, but it, it wasn't just, it was like, okay, I need a full size 9mm, and I spent like three or four months figuring out which one to get. And I figured that I liked the Glock the best. So, uh, nice. I didn't really uh, like the VP9 that much. It's, it looks all fancy and cool looking, and it, it felt good in my hand, but I don't know, I'm more of a Glock guy, apparently. Yeah, there's also a Beretta 92 in the movie, um, and uh, uh, some kind of bolt action with a, a scope and a long sunscreen on it. But um, uh, oh, Didn't uh, Iraq veteran make it? His own version of that gun, or is that something? I might be saying about some other hey, uh, I haven't been keeping up with all of Iraq veterans' of videos, 888 videos yeah, yet. But, um, I did see some of his... That uh, round table I kind of fucking tuned out a little bit. Yeah, um, so I'll just check out the external chats um, really quick, see if anybody's talking on the gun channel side or the YouTube side. Yeah, go check out the section get a chance i'm not sure if is that the one with the cat Leon, leonardo the cat rio or something oh, yeah. it's the one with leo and uh yeah. it's, it's it's bizarre it's a bizarre movie but if you like christopher nolan then you'll like that movie 
Oh, there's a new Western coming out, the, the, the Hostiles. I think I want to go see that one. Is that, you know, it takes a lot of balls to make a Western because they almost always don't, don't make their money back at the box office. Even, but I mean, there's oh, there are exceptions like dancing, dances with wolves, but uh, most of the time westerns don't make enough money at the box office to pay for the production costs and distribution yeah. costs, um, and, uh, promotion, all the other costs associated with the film. But um, I'm gonna go watch that one, um, and because uh, I feel like seeing another western. <laughs> Uh, That's pretty good. So, uh, did you did you like the original Photo Recall? The original Photo I'm, Total Recall. Oh, Total right? Recall. I saw it so long ago, I can't even remember. Uh, well, the, the the end. Well, actually, now I don't remember if that. I don't know. It's it's kind of like a movie like that. I mean, it's more serious. There's a lot more like going on in Inception, but it's kind of like you know, there's violence. It's you know high action at some points. It's confusing. You're not really sure what's going on at some points. And the end of you know it kind of leaves me with that same feeling you get if you re- if you go rewatch Total Recall. You're kind of not really sure at the end if it was a dream or if it was all just actually Total Recall. I don't know. It's kind of weird. It's it's, it's pretty good. I mean, you might, I don't know, knowing some of the movies you like, I think it might you might like it. I don't know. I don't know you that well, but I mean, <laughs> knowing a lot of the different movies that you're into, I think it might be compatible. <laughs> yeah, well, I think Mad Max has a whole survivalist, apocalyptic thing. Like they almost cornered the market on it at, at, at a certain point. But um, uh, you're into apocalyptic prepping. But um, I, I mean, I like all the classics, John Wayne stuff, like uh, the Man Who Shot Liberty Valance. Uh, and um, there, there are a lot of good westerns. I mean, a lot of them are the classics. I, it, what's real? I like the one scene, and I the, that maybe people might pass off or not notice uh, on the first glance is is the scene where uh, in the man who shot Liberty Balance in the restaurant where John Wayne uh, show basically has a showdown with uh, Lee Marvin's character who plays Liberty Balance, and 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 uh, uh, when. Uh, when Lee Marvin trips uh, Jimmy Stewart's uh, character and, and John Wayne's steak dinner falls on the floor, he, he tells Jimmy Stewart's character, no, don't pick it up. <laughs> he wants Liberty Balance to pick it up. And they basically have like a this showdown where John Wayne's going, okay, draw. <laughs> and Lee Marvin is thinking about it. And it, it was just, that was just to play, the way they played off of each other was really good in that scene. And um, it, 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 it was, a, there was another scene like that in that, another movie that I saw recently that I liked, which was a little westerny. Uh, um, uh, it was Jeff Bridges and uh, Christopher Pine in that movie in Texas. Um, Hell or high water, and and at the end of the movie, uh, Christopher Pine has his uh, uh, lever action uh, Winchester, and 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 uh, he play, he's like the bad one of the bad guys, and uh, who got away with robbing a bunch of banks, and the retired police officer is Jeff Bridges' character, and Christopher Pine says. You probably got a gun. Why don't you see if you could draw your gun out of your pocket before I blow you off of this porch? <laughs> and and Jeff and 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 uh, Jeff Bridges is like, I think he is like he means it. You know. <laughs> so I, and, I think I'm gonna watch. I think I'm gonna watch FX tonight. It's on Amazon. That I don't. Movie, I, uh, have you seen that movie FX? No, I haven't seen effects. that one. The special effects artist one. gets hired to fake a hit on a guy to like to get like a like a, to, to pretend kill. A special effects artist gets hired to pretend kill like a mobster, uh, supposedly to take him out. So that way he can go into witness protection or whatever. But really, like he kills him for real or some shit. 
So we're always like pinned on him. So he's got to use all of his special effects knowledge. It's from like the, it's from the mid eighties. All right. Well, I want to check that one. I wanted to say thanks to Mike Hilton survival and prepping for coming on John Brown, Stan Holch, everybody in the external on YouTube. Um, do you have a chance to link to uh, 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 have your own reply? You've got like, I think, three days to do it till the 25th uh, or, or two and a half or whatever. Um, it's in the video description. And uh, make your own comments and tell the ATF what you think. Stand up for your rights. If they can't find it, go to my video and I actually walk you through how to do it. Yeah, so, uh, it's not lazy. that hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that hard. Click the link, you type some words, put in your name, hit enter, and you're done. <laughs> shall not be infringed. I shall not be infringed. I did work that in, in there. Uh, nice. Ohio and Raphael on the Gun Channel side, thanks for showing up this week. Uh, and um, all right, well, I think we're going to take a ride to the chopper. Because for one thing, my diuretics are starting to kick in. So where's my chopper sound? Great. <laughs> All right. Get, get to the, the chopper. chopper. Get to the chopper. So, now. Do it. Get to the chopper. Go. Right. Yeah. So we'll see you guys next week uh, for another edition of Lock and Load. God bless America. And uh, keep your group, group tight. Keep your groups tight, fight the good fight. See you next week. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's been fun. <laughs>